graph on page two that we want to talk through. Look at graph. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me when it's 10 o'clock, Steve. What are you talking about? It's 10 o'clock. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, Scott Neitzel, Secretary of the Department of Administration. With me today is J.P. Weiske, who's the Deputy Commissioner of Insurance for the State of Wisconsin, and Waylon Hurlbert, who is the State Budgets Director. Uh, the reason we wanted to get together this morning is to reiterate the administration's support for moving to self-insurance for state employees. Uh, as we have said in the past, we think this is a good common sense government reform that saves the state taxpayers at least $60 million over the course of the next biennium. Also included in self-insurance is the fact that we would avoid the Obamacare tax, which is another $22 million of GPR. And just uh, this week, the Group Insurance Board looked at what the possibilities were uh, going forward without self-insurance, and that would be an additional cost of $21 million. So what the issue has turned into now is an issue of, one, a good government reform, and two, saving the state taxpayers up to $103 million. The Group Insurance Board also uh, looked at what some of the alternatives would be if the state would not move to self-insurance to save an equivalent amount of money. JP will go over those uh, in a minute. Uh, but I just wanted to stress that this is a good government reform that the Group Insurance Board looked at all its options as, we, as Obamacare was implemented we wanted to make sure that the state got the best deal in the new health insurance world. The Group Insurance Board took a number of months, looked at all the options, and came to the conclusion that self-insurance was the best way to go. Not unlike 46 other states and all large employers. 94% of employers with over 5,000 employees are self-insured. So we are here today to continue the public policy debate. We have more facts about what not going to self-insurance would mean. We want to make sure that those facts get in the public domain and are able to be digested by the legislature before they make a decision on this issue. One thing I'd also like to add is there's been, and as I said, JP will get into what some of the options would be, but if you look at the history over the last six years of what we've made changes to the plans over the last six years, which have put more cost onto the employees already. Those changes, uh, starting in 2011, have added up to about $232 million that we've already uh, put cost onto our employees. Self-insurance allows us to get taxpayer savings of $103 million with no changes to benefits to state employees. We think these numbers are compelling, so compelling that we want to make sure that everybody has them as the legislature moves to make a decision on this very important public policy issue. So with that, I'll turn it over to JP, who will talk about uh, some of the alternatives and what that would mean to uh, our employees and the insurance fund itself. Thank you. Um, I've sat on the group insurance board for a number of years and we've had a lot of discussions regarding uh, moving to the self-insured model. Um, we felt as a board that this was our best, uh, our best responsibility to meet the fiduciary responsibilities of the state and our responsibilities in the group insurance board. And we looked deeply, and we feel very strongly that the savings that uh, Secretary Neitzel highlighted are, are real and that they're deliverable. Um, I think the good news for state employees is, has been that if you look at the benefits that we're looking at, as Secretary Neitzel uh, highlighted, we're looking at keeping the same benefits, 
with mostly the same providers, 98%, uh, and with GHC announcing that they're part of it, that they'll be able, employees will be able to access all the care that they continue to access in the current system. We don't know where it's going to go if we, as we look forward with a number of these issues. Um, I think if you look at the Siegel report from this last week, what you'll see is that the deductibles, the proposed deductibles to reflect the increased costs, the additional $60 million, uh, will increase $1,000 for employee coverage, $2,000 for family coverage. That's a movement from, from $250 deductible and a $500 family deductible to a $1,250 and a $2,500 deductible for state employees. Alternatively, the state could look at increasing the contribution rate for employees. That moves from 12% all the way up to 18%, significant given that the contribution rate was much lower in years past. That 50% increase will be a significant impact on our consumers and our, our employees, which is of great concern. Most of the other proposals that we've looked at, um, that we will, we will look at if, if Joint Finance rejects this proposal, don't have great outcomes. We have no idea whether or not we'd be able to maintain the same system, whether or not we'd be able to maintain the same insurance companies that participate going forward. And so the risks are there, regardless of whether or not we move to self-funded. We have a guarantee with self-funded. We have three-year contracts that are in place uh, related to self-funded that will deliver savings to the state. Um, any of the discussion about reserves are one-time solutions and are not ongoing solutions and will create further and further gap as time goes on between the cost of self-funded and the cost of fully insured. We think it's prudent to take a look at this now. The GIB looked at it in detail. We were rather uniquely situated. We had an actuary look at it. We had actuaries on the board. We have insurance professionals on the board. So the board felt very comfortable with this approach and we think going forward that this is the best approach um, and I think the data data bears that out. I'll turn it over to Waylon to talk about his piece. Thanks. So when I started as state budget director, one of the initiatives of the governor was to reform state benefit programs and put savings from that into education. So what did he do in the budget? And what has happened since then? What he put in the budget was $60 million in general fund savings that he's directed toward the University of Wisconsin system to benefit them in their compensation and also to benefit K-12 education. That's what he put in the budget. That's 134.4 million all funds. So you're going to see a couple numbers in the press release there. Those savings in the governor's budgets are 134.4 million all funds. That's 60 million GPR. That's important to point out. Another thing in the budget is an additional 22 million in general fund savings estimated because we will not be paying the tax, the Obamacare tax, on the health premiums. That's because self-insured plans don't have to pay that tax, which, as was mentioned previously, why we started this whole process, why the group insurance board started looking into this, was to, one, because we wanted to avoid that tax. If we don't move to self-insurance, that's going to be passed on to state taxpayers. That's an all-funds cost annually of $34 million. That's not insignificant. And that goes away if we're self-insured. We had new news this week that affects our budget. So this week, when the Group Insurance Board met on Wednesday, they were told by Siegel that looking at actual data from the plans, we're looking at a 10% premium increase next year, 2018. We did not budget for a 10% increase in premiums. So what does that mean? That means that we have additional cost to the general fund based on their estimates for next year. That's another $21 million pushing the total cost over $100 million in this biennium general fund cost. The all funds cost, significantly higher than that. That's a significant amount of money that goes away if we move to self-insurance. There are many other options that have been discussed. They pose many pros and cons. The path that has been pursued and presented on self-insurance is a common sense approach with signed contracts sitting in the legislature ready to go. These are actual savings, as was mentioned previously. These are not estimates. This is not a, a report from Deloitte in 2012 that estimated savings or losses. This is not a Seagull estimate that estimates savings. These are actual contracts ready to be signed by the state that would move the state to self-insurance and take that $100 million cost off the books. Anything else? 
anything else? That's nope, good. that's good. So just to reiterate, uh, this is a hundred million dollar decision and we continue to urge the legislature to move forward with self-insurance as it was put into the governor's budget. So with that, we'll take questions. We know this can get a little wonky. We'll try not to make it wonky if we can. The group insurance board talks about regionalization. What would the savings be if that was the approach that was taken compared to the 60 million that you're talking about? We don't know. Um, it depends on who signs up. That's sort of one of the risks because you don't know who's going to participate on a fully insured basis in each one of those regions. So uh, there is no estimate. It will not be as much of savings as you would get from uh, from the self-insured approach. That we know, but we have no idea who's going to sign up, whether they're going to sign up, and whether or not they'll be uncovered regions. It's just to reiterate. I mean, we know, we know what we will get with self-insurance. All the other issues that have been raised or ideas that have been raised are very speculative. So here again, it makes sense to do this good government reform when we have surety that we will get these savings for the taxpayers. Can someone go into a little bit more detail about um, the, the reserves that obviously legislators have talked about that as, a, as an option? So the, the reserves um, are actuarially justified in each year. I'm going to have to get a little too wonky on this, but uh, every year you take a look uh, from an insurance perspective when you're running insurance, you have a certain number of reserves that make sense that, that you put together. So each year uh, they make an estimate of what the reserves should be, and they look at the end of the year as the, uh, to where reserves are. And so each year um, the board makes a separate decision on targeting the reserves as to where they should sit. This is, a, this is good actuarial practice. This is not a squirreling away of reserves. This was a good actuarial practice that we're, we were, as a board, managing the reserve levels uh, each and every year. And I think you can take a look from the, from the releases that uh, the board used those reserves over the last several years in, in a number of cases. But just to be clear, that's a one-time right. option. That self-insurance is a 60 to $100 million structural reduction in the state's cost. Using reserves, you get to do that for one year or one biennium, and then it's gone. Then you still have all the costs that are rolling up, and now you've spent down your reserve. Can you explain how you get from 60 million in GPR to all funds of 134.4? What is all funds, and what's the different? How, I don't understand that we. So we have a state employees that are funded by segregated sources, program revenue, federal revenue, and general fund funded positions. So we cannot, you know, the self-insurance is going to save money for all these positions, but we can't take those savings from a federally funded position and have those benefit the general fund and then use those to fund education. So it gets a little bit wonky, but you have many fund sources in a budget. You got segregated revenue, program revenue, uh, uh, general purpose revenue, federal revenue. The all funds number is including all those because you have employees funded out of all those different fund sources. But we can't pull all that money in from those segregated accounts. I can't take money from segregated account at DOT savings we get there and put it into the general fund for schools. So 60 million is the general fund impact that we're able to then use for schools. All these other pots of money, and you, the savings across the board, uh, all these other silos. It's important to point out, and that's an important question, because to find the savings to be equivalent to the savings of self-insurance, you've got to hit the higher number. You've got to hit the higher number. The 134.4, not the 60 million we're talking about. And because of that, you can't draw down reserves by that amount responsibly. You can't increase employee premiums responsibly, like we just talked about, uh, to hit those higher numbers. Because the actual savings for self-insurance is much higher. It's just that the, the state funds its benefits with many different fund sources. And I, just on reserves, eight out of the last 10 years, the state, of, the group insurance board has used a portion of those reserves to responsibly manage that account by using small amounts to kind of manage the increases in the following years. So eight out of the last 10 years, those have been used. Are you saying uh, if, if the legislature didn't want to go with self-insurance, they wouldn't need to make up just the $60 million, they would need to make up $134 million? Is that correct? Okay. You said premiums are going to go up 10% of 
Did you plan for any increase in your budget? And if so, what was that? Go ahead. Go ahead. So we, we accounted for premium increases of 7% each year. So 10% is higher than we budgeted for, and that's where you get the additional $21 million in GPR over the biennium that we're estimating. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. We know it's wonkish, <laughs> but it's very important. <laughs>